Now, since this is a cumulative case argument, it's, it's empirical. Uh, we look out at the world and we, we just ask the question, what do we see? What patterns do we see? That's just science. And one of the patterns that I claim that we see is that habitability correlates with measurability. And we claim this is a surprise. So the first 10 chapters of our book uh, are basically just presenting the empirical evidence over a wide range of uh, scientific disciplines uh, from geophysics to atmospheric sciences to planetary sciences uh, to stellar astrophysics to galactic astronomy, cosmology, and we even have a chapter on the fine-tuning of the laws of physics. Unfortunately, I don't have time to go through every example. It would take us probably six hours, and that's one reason the book is 400, 444 pages long. Um, so I'm just going to present a couple of examples, but first let me just run through uh, uh, the examples uh, that we do present very briefly. So uh, the first chapter is on perfect solar eclipses, and I'll have more to say on this one in a little while. Turns out the Earth is the best place in the solar system to view total eclipses of the sun. Is that just a coincidence, or is there a deeper meaning to that? Uh, the Earth's surface is also the best recorder of information in the solar system. Uh, you can think of the Earth's surface as containing literally millions of little data recorders or strip chart recorders. Uh, constantly recording data about the environment automatically and archiving that information uh, for later retrieval. That seems like a surprise also, just based on, uh, if you want to use a Darwinian explanation for how we got here and how the, uh, the Earth got here, why should the planet uh, contain all this uh, very uh, rich information, these vast archives of information? That's a surprise. So is that just a coincidence? Uh, plate tectonics that has a role to play both in uh, life on Earth, as Don Brownlee and Peter Ward argued in their book, Rare Earth, uh, but in addition, it makes the Earth uh, a very measurable place. We can measure the interior structure of the Earth because of earthquakes. And plate tectonics uh, is also related to the generation of magnetic field in the Earth uh, through the, the flow of heat to the Earth's interior. And as Jay mentioned, a magnetic field is necessary to make a, a planet habitable for complex life. Well, at the same time, a magnetic field serves, you might say, as a global positioning system. And for those of you who know a little geology, uh, the study of paleomagnetic fields has been extremely important in figuring out uh, the Earth's geologic history and uh, uh, choosing between the old geosynclinal theory uh, and the uh, plate tectonic theory. Uh, the amazingly information-rich uh, magnetic reversals recorded on the ocean floor has been absolutely crucial in, in distinguishing between those theories. The transparency of the atmosphere. That's a particularly simple observation that everybody can appreciate. Uh, if it were not for the fact that the atmosphere is transparent, we would not know about the stars beyond the Earth or the other planets, or we wouldn't have a subject of cosmology. We couldn't ask questions about origins, origins of the universe. And it all rests on that one little coincidence that the atmosphere is transparent. Of course, for existence, for survival, for a Darwinian type explanation, all you need is a merely translucent atmosphere, right? Photosynthesis doesn't, photosynthesizing plants don't need to observe stars, okay? All they need is to detect photons. And for that, you just need a translucent atmosphere. So again, another surprise. Is that just a coincidence? Our planetary neighbors, and by that I mean the other planets and, and the moon, uh, they played surprisingly important roles in maintaining the Earth habitable, and they've also helped uh, in science, especially the development of gravitational theories, uh, starting uh, with Kepler, his observation of, um, or his determination of three laws of planetary motion, and then Newton uh, with his universal law of gravitation, and Einstein with his uh, general theory of relativity, all depend uh, to a surprisingly high degree on the particular circumstances of the uh, solar system we find ourselves in. Okay, astronomy gave birth to physics, not the other way around. <coughs> stars. Turns out stars are remarkably information rich as well with their spectra. Uh, you can think of stars as literally probes uh, that transmit information back uh, in, uh, or in all directions. Uh, and so they serve as a particularly important probes of the universe. Our location in the galaxy, and also I'll have something more to say about this one a little later, so I'm going to skip that for now. Cosmic time. Again, Jay mentioned that you have to live in a certain time in the history of the universe. Not too early when the uh, radiation levels were far more intense and the heavy elements were still not abundant enough to, to make Earth-sized planets. And not too late in cosmic history uh, when the star formation rate has declined and so you don't have sun-like stars around anymore. You just have dim red dwarfs and also the uh, radioactive elements that are necessary to drive plate tectonics uh, will have decayed uh, in a few uh, billion years. 
And finally, you need a fine-tuned Cosmos. And uh, we...